हिटपु नीतिपति दापुल दलिवेरा देदास विषय के मैं ही दाहत तो न दिने न्यूज़ फर्स्टी सुल्फिक फर्सान नेमति माध्य वेदिया सामग्र कल साका चाविदी कनला फॉर्मर अटॉर्नी जनरल दापुल दलिवेरा ऑन द 17th ऑफ़ मई 2021 इन एन इंटरव्यू विद न्यूज़ फर्स्ट सुल्फिक फर्सान मेड अ स्टेटमेंट एंड इंस्टेड ऑफ़ Peruse the 130-page report given by him to the Inspector General of Police and investigate the content. Certain individuals have been convicted by the Supreme Court. The Attorney General's Department, the police are lethargic in implementing the recommendations of the Presidential Commission. We are also disappointed about the government that follows the same lethargic process despite shedding crocodile tears. There is a disparity in what they say and what they do. We are concerned whether the present President and the Minister of Public Security stating that they are ready for an honest engagement with the Catholic Church was done to protect the double standards. The IMF gave a loan and not a gift. Crackers are lit for gifts. Furthermore, we cannot have any form of faith on the present leadership of this country that wanted dictatorship and brushes away the mandate of the people. His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit highlighted four key areas with regard to the 2019 April terror attacks that need to be investigated further, disregarding the warnings given by the Indian intelligence on four occasions. Expose the officer who forced ISIS to claim responsibility for the attack. Confirm and expose Abu Him, a character revealed at the Presidential Commission. Expose two people identified as Abu and Rimzan. An investigation should take place on the intelligence officer who goes by the code name Sonic Sonic, who forced the Indonesian ISIS wing to claim responsibility for the attacks via Matale Zaharan and the IP related to the mobile device that was used and to expose its owner. According to the Presidential Commission report, the CID had given evidence stating that they are investigating the identity of Abu Hind. Who is this Abu Hind? We need to know that. His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit expressed concern with regard to certain areas of investigation that aroused suspicion. The report of the Presidential Commission noted that authorities were aware of Jamil who detonated the bomb at the tropical inn in Dahiwala until his last moments and were aware of his movements and also inquired about him from his wife by visiting his residence. The military intelligence was aware of this person's suspicious behavior. We have serious doubts as to why they allowed him to kill himself by detonating the seventh bomb instead of arresting him as he was a witness to the operations of this terror group. We also have concerns whether he detonated the device himself or was it detonated remotely. We need to know why DIG Nalaka de Silva, who planned to arrest Zaharan Hashim on a warrant, was imprisoned and thus preventing him taking action to prevent the attacks from taking place. What happened to the Easter attack investigation led by SP Shania Besekara and SP Ravi Senaviratna? Two DNA tests have confirmed that Sara was not among those killed in the gun battle between Zaharan's group and the Sri Lanka army and that she was not present at the time. It is clear that her remains were not recovered. Therefore, why did the authorities decide to call for a third DNA test to prove that she was dead? You would like to know if the officials are trying to prove her death in order to conceal her information. Who gave the order to call for a third DNA test? You would like to know if that order was given by the mastermind who wants to conceal the truth with regard to the Easter Sunday attacks. That person could be the mastermind. His Eminence also commented on attempts being made to create divisions. Uh, there is a move in this country by in some quarters to try to portray that the Christians have a problem with the Buddhists and that the, the Christians are harassing uh, Buddhists clergy very specially in the social media making negative comments about them and so on and I stated that we are not in favor of any such behavior we have a very good opinion and relationship with uh, our Buddhist brothers and sisters that we appreciate that this country's culture is based on Buddhist principles and doctrine even if we are Christians 
Hindus and Muslims, we live in this culture and we are shaped, our thought patterns are shaped by this culture. Even passively, we, are, we experience this. Therefore, we will never do anything to harm Buddhism. We should never take any steps to harm Buddhism, that we assure that we are brothers and sisters of all our brothers and sisters who are in the Buddhist faith as well as in the Islamic and in the Hindu uh, traditions, that we are all one uh, group of citizens of this country. Thank you. The Apostolic Nuncio to Sri Lanka, who attended this special service, announced a message from His Holiness the Pope. The commemoration ceremonies are definitely not to seek revenge, but to pray and seek justice for the innocent victims. At the same time, we recall that such contemptible acts go against the teachings of the four major religions practiced in this beautiful island and which unreservedly condemned the act. I earnestly appeal that we continue to pray for the victims, the martyrs of the attacks, that they remain in the presence of God as we renew our commitment to never let such atrocities happen again. I wish to conclude in the words of the 44th President of the United States of America, Mr. Barack Obama, he said, no religion is responsible for terrorism. People are responsible for violence and terrorism. I bring to all the affected and all Sri Lankans the blessings of the Holy Father. Pope Francis. Prior to the special service, the families of the victims of the Easter Sunday attacks prayed opposite the St. Anthony Shrine in Kochikale. Candles were lit in memory of the lost souls. Religious leaders and diplomats, among others, were present for this special service. <laughs> Sri Lanka is probably the only country in the world with massive levels of corruption and with rulers who fail to perform their duties. Sri Lanka is the only country where public property is looted in the open. In addition, Sri Lanka is the only country where there is a group of religious leaders who invoke the blessings on the political leaders who commit all these malpractices. We call this country the Buddhist country, but if we cannot see justice and if we cannot see the Dhamma, we should go international with our cause. <laughs> We were about to see a repeat of the 1983 Singhala Tamil riots, and that was what the leaders at the time wanted. They deceived the people with the Dhammika tonic, sterilization kotu, and even ruined Dr. Shafi. They brought about many calamities. The people were deceived with snake from the Kalani River. Then at once they exploded bombs and destroyed people's lives. We demand justice. <laughs> At this moment, I express my sympathies to the families that were affected and we will pay for them. The war for truth and justice for the victims of the 2019 Easter bombings that got underway on Thursday evening from St. Sebastian's Church, Katua Pitya, reached St. Anthony's Shrine in Kuchkare at 8.40 a.m. on Friday. The walk took place following a special service and proceeded along the Kalambu Nigambo main road via Katunayaka, Ambalan Mulla, Kudalla, Kandana, Mattumagala, Wattala and Kotahena prior to reaching Kochikare. Ratama Andaya Puluya Jeeviya Mandaya 